This is the practice problem from um, uh, that deals with implicit differentiation from um, the year 2000's um, FRQ uh, from College Board. All right, so this problem says consider the curve given by x y q minus x q y is equal to six. Show that the derivative equation um, is given here. Now show that the derivative equation. Um, is what pr was provided. So uh, the answer is given. We just have to uh, show the work that gets us from uh, the equation to the derivative. Um, notice the, uh, the x and y's are not nicely separated on either side. Um, so we have to go through implicit differentiation um, since the variables are mixed together on one side of the equation. Uh, again, with uh, implicit differentiation, we're going to be um, applying uh, the appropriate derivative rules. Uh, but uh, each time we come across um, having to, to find the derivative involving y, we have to attach a dy dx. Okay? Um, so no, we, we have to go through implicit differentiation. And then also, um, the x and y's are related to one another uh, by multiplication. So we also have to involve product rule. So product rule here, uh, just to remind us, is f prime times g plus f g prime. All right, so part A, we apply the derivative rule for both these equations. Um, uh, the x and y squared, I'll treat um, the x as the f and the y squared as the g for the first part. And then we have to go through another series of product rule. Uh, and I'll treat the x cubed as the f and then, again, the second function y as the g. So let's take care of the first um, expression, uh, first term here. So x, y squared, so the derivative for x is going to be 1, so that's left out, but that's, so there should be a 1 here, times g prime. So times g prime. Actually, uh, I'm going through product rule, going through this rule, so everything's going to be reversed a bit. So the, um, the derivative for x is going to be 1, so that's just sitting here. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, 1. Uh, I'm sorry, this is, this is, work, this is going to work out. All right, so x is 1, so f prime times g, so uh, the, the uh, g function is going to just simply be y squared plus um, the derivative for, um, uh, well, we're going to keep the x, so keep the x, and then we find the derivative for uh, y squared, so that's the g prime, so then that will give us uh, 2y. So 2y dy dx, because we have to involve y's derivative, we have to attach dy dx. So this order sh um, is, two, is x times 2y dy dx. Okay, minus, now we can take care of um, the second um, expression that we're also going to apply product rule. So product rule, uh, we're going to find the derivative for the first function, which is, um, that's f prime, so x cubed becomes 3x squared, and then we keep um, the g function, right, plus uh, x cubed, so that's the f function, times the derivative for um, g prime, for, so g prime, the derivative for y is 1, and we have to attach a dy dx, because we have to involve y's derivative is equal to 0. And then that negative is there, um, uh, so that negative gets distributed to both terms, um, so that's why both terms ends up being negative. And then don't forget the 6 is a constant, so the derivative for a constant will go to 0. Okay, Make sure that um, when you go through implicit differentiation that you don't forget about the constant. Constant is also affected by the derivative procedure. Okay, so now it's just a matter of trying to... Um, group the uh, dy dx by itself. So these two dy dx, I'll move to the left side. Um, and then the y squared and negative 3x squared, we can move to the other side of the equation. We can factor out the dy dx. We can divide both sides by the parentheses. So now we have our derivative that matches um, what is asked of, of us for part A. All right, part B, find all the points on the curve whose x coordinate is 1. So you want to find out order pairs where x is equal to 1. So we basically need to find the y value, right? So if we want to find the y value, we can plug 1 into the equation and then just solve for y. So if I plug 1 in for x, I'll get 1y squared minus 1y is equal to 6. So y squared minus y is equal to 6. If I bring the 6 over, I can go through factoring. If I go through factoring, I get y equals 3 and y equals negative 2. So we have two order pairs. Um, the first order pair is going to be 1, 3, and then the other order pair is going to be 1, negative 2. So two order pairs at 1, 3, and at 1, negative 2. All right, so next step, 
um, write an equation for the tangent line at each of these points. All right, so if we want to find the tangent line equation, we need order pair and we need slope. Okay, so to find um, we have uh, so for the first order pair to find the slope, we're going to plug one three into the deri the derivative equation because the derivative equation is basically the slope finding formula, right? If I plug in one, if I plug in any order pair in return, um, the derivative equation will give me the slope of the tangent line at that point on the curve. So if we plug one three in for x and y, we get three times three is nine, nine minus nine, which is zero, all over six minus one which is 0. So our slope is 0, our order pair is 1, 3. So if we put this into um, um, point slope form, we get y minus 3 is equal to the slope x times x minus 1. And then the 0 will just cancel everything out. We get y minus 3 is equal to 0, so therefore that's why y is equal to 3. Okay. Um, the second um, is going to be the second order pair is 1, negative 2. If we plug 1, negative 2 into the derivative equation, um, we'll get negative 6 minus 4 over negative 4 minus 1, which is negative 10 over negative 5, which is 2. So we have our order pair of 1, negative 2. We have our slope of 2. And then we just plug into point slope form. So y minus negative 2 or y plus 2 is equal to the slope 2 times x minus 1. All right, part C, find the x-coordinate of each point where the tangent line is vertical. All right, tangent line is going to be vertical. Uh, it's basically where um, the slope is undefined. Slope is undefined where the denominator of the derivative is equal to 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the denominator of the derivative equal to 0 and then see if we can find the x value. So um, here's, our here's, our, here's the denominator of the derivative equation, 2xy minus x cubed is, uh, is the denominator. We're going to set that equal to 0. When we set that equal to 0, we can factor out the x, which leaves us with x times 2y minus x squared. So this is already in factor form. If we solve for x, um, for the first one, I get x equals 0. For the second one, um, we can solve, probably easier to solve for y, so we don't want to deal with the square root. So if we solve for y, we get y is equal to 1 half x squared. Now the problem with x equals 0 is that this point doesn't even exist on the uh, equation, on the curve. Because if this is the original equation, I just brought this um, equation down from, um, uh, from the beginning of the problem. Here's the original equation. If we plug 0 into the original equation, 0 minus 0 is equal to 6. So, uh, and we know that's not true. So we know that 0 doesn't even exist on this curve because um, we can't get the... Um, um, we can't get the equation to be uh, to be true to match. So we know that we don't have to worry about zero. Zero is not going to be a point. Um, the other is going to be y is equal to one half x squared. So uh, we're not given a constant here, but what we can do is maybe we can uh, do substitution, plug this one half x squared in for all the y values, and see if we can solve for x. So that's what we need to do. Uh, so if I plug one half x squared in for all the y values, so y gets replaced with one half x squared. This y gets replaced with 1 half x squared. And then the next step I have shown here, so x times the replacement for y, 1 half x squared, squared, minus x cubed, and then y gets replaced again with 1 half x squared. And then just a series of algebraic steps to clean this up. Um, 1 half gets squared, so that becomes 1 fourth. The x squared, squared is x to the fourth, times x. So x, if we multiply like bases, we add exponents, so 1 plus 4 is going to be to the fifth. And the second expression here is to the first power, so just bring the 1 half out, add the exponents, 3 plus 2 is equal to 5, so 1 fourth x to the fifth minus 1 half x to the fifth is equal to 6. We can combine these together um, by finding common denominator, 1 fourth minus 2 fourths is equal to negative 1 fourth, so negative 1 fourth x to the fifth equals 6. Now it's just a matter of trying to solve for x. So we can just multiply both sides by um, negative 4, which becomes negative 24, and then take the fifth root. So x is equal to the fifth root of negative 24.